In just about an hour, I'm gonna show you how to build an entire church website from scratch. And I, I'm being serious with this. You can just look at the runtime on this video. This is not a few quick tips and then we're done. This is comprehensive. The best part is I wanna invite you to follow along with me as I build this new church website. Because it's one thing to watch me do it. It's another to mirror me as I show you how to do it. And I want you to think of this like your church website apprenticeship. Okay, uh, I'm gonna show you the ropes and you're actually gonna get hands on with this. And to make this as easy as possible, there are a series of additional resources in a folder linked below called the Church Website Super Guide. You can scan the QR code on the screen right now to download it. Again, it's also linked in the description. Let's begin, shall we? First, I am going to head to nucleus.church and create a new account from scratch. Nucleus is a church website builder that my company built and launched seven years ago. Thousands of churches power their website using Nucleus. Of course, the question is, why are we using Nucleus in this tutorial and not another website builder? And there are two reasons. Number one, because this is an apprenticeship, for me to give you the best training I possibly can, I need to be in my shop with my tools. And as you'll see, I've actually prepared everything in Nucleus already for you to make this process as easy and painless as possible. Reason number two, Nucleus is a church website builder. It comes with a ton of church specific features that you won't find on other platforms. And it's made specifically for church staff and volunteers, for the people that need to manage the church's website, but are not themselves tech geniuses. And just to emphasize how committed I am to helping as many churches as possible launch great websites, we're giving 1,000 churches free website makeovers by the end of 2025. You can go to nucleus.church, click the free makeovers button at the top of the page to join the waiting list. And I'll tell you more about how that process works later on. Now, after you've done that, you wanna open up another tab in your browser and follow these steps to create a new free Nucleus account. There's no credit card required or anything like that. First, from the Nucleus homepage, I'm gonna click free trial. And now I'll enter my email and password and click create my account. Next, let's finish our account setup by adding some information. Name, my role in the church, the name of my church, senior pastor's name, address, email, phone number, and finally, rough weekend attendance numbers. Once that's done, Nucleus is gonna fire up your new account. And the reason that we ask for all of this information in the setup process is that we actually use it to pre-populate a bunch of information on your site. And this makes the configuration easier right from the very beginning. Last thing that we can do here is invite other people on leadership to help with the site. You can invite as many people as you want. And there are different roles based on how much access that you want to give to people. Nucleus doesn't charge per admin or anything like that. For now, I'm just gonna skip this. I can always invite more people later. And hey, look, some nice celebratory confetti as our new account is set up. Let's go. now. I'm logged in to the Nucleus dashboard. You're gonna see a banner asking me to verify my email address. This is just for security purposes. So I'll head over to my inbox, find that email, click the verification button and ta-da, we have a fresh new Nucleus account ready to build with. And the best part is that a ton of the heavy lifting is already done for you. And this is why I wanted to do this apprenticeship in my shop with my tools, because it allows me to prepare everything for you and your church down to the smallest of details. So you're not actually starting from scratch because my team and I have already done a ton of the heavy lifting. Now, before we go any further, make sure that you've completed all the steps that I've shown you here to make sure that we're both starting from the same place. Otherwise, you won't be able to follow along with me in the same way as I go. What I wanna do now is click on the View Website dropdown here and then click Preview URL. And what you'll find is that we have pre-populated your Nucleus already. You have an entire church website ready to go. It just needs to be customized which makes this the perfect time to begin our talk about church website policy. Bottom line is this, your church website has three responsibilities, inspiration, information, and invitation. We call these the three I's and they're ranked in order of importance. Let's start with inspiration. And the phrase here that you wanna to commit to memory is show, don't tell. If I go back to our preview URL and take a look at the demo site that Nucleus has initialized for me, what you'll see are these big photo containers across the site at the top of the homepage. And then as you scroll down the page, more big photo containers. This is a recurring theme across the entire site. Why? Well, because we can communicate in an instant with a photo what would take paragraphs worth of text. Show, 
don't tell. Uh, this is not just my belief either. We've got mountains of data on this. First, in conjunction with the University of Basel in Switzerland, Google published a research paper about the role of visual complexity on websites and how it influences a person's first impression. And here are a number of the core findings from the research. Number one, first impressions on a website occur within 50 milliseconds or less. That's 0.05 seconds. Next, websites with low visual complexity were perceived as highly appealing. And third, users love simple and familiar designs. To quote Google directly, users strongly prefer website designs that look both simple and familiar. So what are our takeaways here? There's nothing to be gained by reinventing the wheel with our church website from a creative standpoint. In fact, the opposite is true. Clean and simple web design is, and always will be, superior. Moreover, first impressions, they're happening in an instant. And how are they being made? Well, people are certainly not reading our church's About Us paragraph in 0.05 seconds. So obviously, it's the visuals that are driving that first impression. Remember, show, don't tell. It also turns out that the type of visuals matters. In fact, multiple research papers have been published on the value of human photos within website design. First, researchers from the University of Bradford found that initial trust was boosted on websites that have photos of human faces. University College London found that adding happy photos of people to websites, websites with low trust, in fact, increased perceived trustworthiness. Canadian researchers at Simon Fraser and McMaster found that websites with photos of human faces were more positively received by users than websites with photos lacking human faces or websites lacking photos of humans whatsoever. What does this all mean for us as we build our church websites? The absolute best church photos that you can take and add to your church website design are photos of your church's people and the vibrant community that is unique to your congregation. Photos of smiling faces especially make great first impressions, they earn trust, and they're the perfect representation of the existential matters that every church is involved in. Because this is not just about effectiveness. Effectiveness is only worth it when it interacts with faithfulness and the values of your church. And what do we know about our faith communities? The church is the people. So now that we know what we're aspiring to, how do we actually do it? Well, every week we coordinate church photo shoots all around the world. So I want to equip you with the exact advice and shot list that we share with these photographers. I'll also emphasize that this is included in a downloadable guide linked in the description. First, let's outline our objective with these photos. We say it like this. A successful church photo shoot is all about capturing the organic nature of church life with an emphasis on the people. In terms of what to bring, long lenses are always a great tool so you can capture interactions and sacred moments from afar. Fast lenses will be an asset as well so you can deal with the low lighting of some church sanctuaries. A variety of focal lengths are ideal so you can capture a variety of perspectives. And if you're looking for a guide on the best cameras for churches, we have a complete downloadable resource on that. It's linked in the description. And then in terms of what not to bring or worry about for church photos, Studio lights, you're just going to want to work with the natural lighting conditions of the church building. And you can leave the tripods at home as well. Run and gun is the way to go. Let's get into the shot list now. There are key moments to capture before, during, and after a church service. And for all of these, you'll want a variety of orientations, meaning both landscape and portrait. First, before service, you're going to want to take photos of the parking lot as people arrive, greeters at the front door welcoming people, people in the foyer or lobby, people grabbing a coffee. For the worship service itself, capture close-ups of the music and worship team. Doing this during practice is a great way to get creative angles that would otherwise be disruptive when service is actually going on. When service actually is happening, get shots of the congregation worshiping, the MC spot or announcements, the preacher, the altar call, and prayer. And then finally, after service. It's a great time to capture photos. Photos of people at the connection booth, people getting prayed for, and people mingling after church. Now. If you are the type of church that does not want to take photos of sacred moments within a worship service, if you want to just sidestep that, it's perfectly all right. Remember, the objective of the church photo shoot is to capture the organic nature of church life with an emphasis on the people. That can be in the lobby before service. It can be at the doors as greeters welcome people. It doesn't need to be while people pray and worship. Moreover, if you're a church plant or a church that is yet to launch, or if, if you just don't have the typical church setup and you're thinking, you know, you know, Braid, how can this work for us? The same objective remains, the organic nature of church life with an emphasis on people. This will still work for church plants and churches that are launching and non-traditional churches. Just stick to that objective. You'll be fine. Cater it to you. And then 
If you're curious about the legality of taking people's photos in church and all that comes with that, we've got a guide linked in the description to help with those questions as well. Now, as we get into designing this church website, the goal is to have between eh, 100 and 250 edited photos ready to go. I've got that right here in a folder already. If you want me to do a separate video on how to actually shoot and edit photos, let me know in the comments below. Like I said, we coordinate photo shoots with churches all around the world every single week. Uh, so if you want us to send a photographer to your church to do the photo shoot for you. We offer that as a free service to churches and we'll get into how and why we do that later in the video. Now, the first and most important photo I need to place is the big photo in our hero section at the top of the website. Why is this the most important? Well, because more people will see this part of our website than any other. And we know the photo that goes here is what's going to be driving first impressions as we've discussed. So here's the photo that I want to use. And, and this is a great tip for you. Stay close to the greeters when taking photos at church. Remember our goal, to capture the organic nature of church life with an emphasis on people. The easiest way to find this is often to just hang out with the greeters during Sunday morning because their mornings are full of great interactions. What I also love about this photo is that it's the same experience a new person will get when they attend our church for the first time. It's the same experience every regular attender gets when they visit church each week. It emphasizes the people of our church, but not just the staff, not just the pastors. And it's real. These people are not posing. This doesn't feel forced. So let's upload this photo to our site. From the Pages tab in Nucleus, I'll click on Edit Homepage. Next, I'll click on Hero under the column Section Name. And now, I'll click on Adjust Background. And here, we'll see the placeholder image of the person grabbing the door handle. I'll click Edit Image, then Replace Image, and upload our new photo. And at this point, I want to draw your attention to a very few crucial features of Nucleus that will allow you to style and frame your photo perfectly. Firstly, under the Edit Image tab, you'll see a button with the title Set Focal Point. Every time you upload a new photo to Nucleus, you'll want to make sure that you set its focal point. This is because people will visit your website from devices of all different sizes and orientations. By setting your focal point, Nucleus will intelligently frame your photo to always emphasize what matters most in your image, no matter what type of device a person is visiting your website from. The default focal point of the image is the center, which in this photo happens to be the torso of our greeter. We don't want that. So I'll set it on the greeter's face at their eye line and save the focal point. Now, if I scroll down to advanced media options, we have another extremely useful feature, the ability to stylize an image directly in our web editor. Right now, our media opacity is set to 80% instead of 100, and we've got a fade on our image coming in from the bottom at 40% strength. This is set so that the text on top of our image is clearly legible. If I close out this tab and click preview to see our new image in place, you see that it's blended quite well with the text on top of it. But if I go back to the adjust background window and I change the media opacity to 100% and remove the fade altogether and then I click preview again, here's what that image would look like if I just used it as is without any styling. Now here you can see the before and the after. Without any styling, the photo makes this text very difficult to read, which at first blush might make you think, you know, this, is, this photo is not a good fit for this section. That's not true. It just needs a bit of styling. And this is why these features exist within Nucleus. Just to show you a bit more of what can be done, every kind of blend mode that you'd expect to see in an image editor like Photoshop, they exist here. So let me show you another cool way of using these tools. If I change my blend mode to luminosity, my entire image becomes black and white instead of color. And then in the background color section, I can choose a custom color. Let's say my church's brand color is blue. I'll paste in that hex code, bring the fade intensity up to 70, go back to my preview. Now I've got a completely different look using that same photo. And you can keep experimenting and previewing in real time. So just cycle through the different blend modes well, let's try screen, for example. And this brings back the color in the image, but with a similar type of blend. The options are endless here, and you don't need to make these changes in a Canva or a Photoshop. This is probably the best time, though, to talk about publishing changes in Nucleus. You've seen me use the preview button already. That's how I preview any changes that I've made. If I want to make those changes live on my site, I can click the publish button and then choose to either publish those changes right now or schedule them for a later date. I can even add a time to unpublish any changes for a future date after they're live if I just want them to be temporary changes. Let's say that I've made some changes to my site though. I've previewed them. They look awful and I just want to undo all of it. If I just click the exit button in the top left corner, 
Now I get two options. One is to save my changes. This won't publish them live, but it will save them to your Nucleus admin area so you can come back to them and continue working on them at a later date. If you want to abandon the changes altogether and just revert back to how things were, click on discard changes, confirm that, and now you're back to how it was, no fuss. Now, I mentioned that the hero section of your church's website is the most important section. It takes up the most real estate at the top of the homepage. That part of your site that will be seen by more people than any other. So let's talk about a few different layouts that I really like for your hero section. You can find the one that you think is the best fit for you. Here's the first option that we're building. Full screen background image, two call to action buttons, and a few different bits of text. We've got our main headline, grow in faith with people who love Jesus. Our overline, join us this week. And our body text, our church is dedicated to creating a space that encourages spiritual growth and connection. And if I go into our Nucleus admin area, you can see each of these text areas right here. If I wanted to change any of the text, I'd simply type or paste in my new copy, click preview to see how it looks. And then I've got the same options that we just discussed in terms of saving, previewing, or publishing those changes. Let's explore some different layouts altogether though. I'm gonna start by clicking on change layout and you'll see the one selected here. If I hover, I can see that it's layout five. And the preview shows that layout five is defined by this two column split. I just want one column of text, and so I'm gonna change this to layout four. And below that, I've got some additional options like section height and text width and text anchoring to get a good feel for how each of these might look. I like to use the preview option, but let me show you one specific combination of options that I really like. I'll set my preferred section height to tall, my preferred text width to medium, my text anchoring to center bottom. For section inset, I'll go with full width and paragraph columns at one. Next. I'll go to the text and buttons tab, make some changes here as well. Under alignment, I'll make sure all text is centered. I want my buttons side by side instead of stacked. And then I just want less text altogether in my hero section. So really all I want is headline. I'm gonna unselect top label and body to remove them. I'll close out of all of that. And now in my text section, you can see I've only got one option. It's just the headline. So I'm gonna type in a new headline that reads encounter God like never before. Here's another cool thing I'm gonna do. I'm going to underline the word God just to add a subtle emphasis. I've got a different image in mind for this hero section too. So now that our headline reads, encounter God like never before, you know, at least to me, I want an image of worship to go along with that because it feels more thematically aligned. So I'll click adjust background again and upload the new image that I've got earmarked for that. And this one is looking a bit too dark right now with our previous settings because the room where this photo was taken was just a lot darker. So. I'm gonna make some adjustments. I'll bring up the media opacity to 100 and then bring down the fade to 20. And then I wanna try a different font and a different navigation display for this hero section. So I'll save these changes and now navigate to the design tab. Here I've got a host of options. You'll see I've already got my logo mark in place with both a light and dark option. If I scroll down to style and behavior, here I can choose a menu style. Right now I've got the mobile style selected where the menu is contained within its own selectable button. Again, in our first hero section, I think this made a lot of sense because the text was in the center of the screen. There was a lot more text overall. Remember how much we removed as we began building this second hero section? And we also moved the text to align it to the bottom of the section, meaning there is now just a lot more empty space than there was before. And so a traditional on-page nav menu, I think that makes a lot more sense. So that's the one that I'm going to choose. Now I'll go to the fonts tab. Here you can select from more than 1500 Google font families and you can tweak them to the nth degree or you can just choose from a font pack that we've already tuned for you with its own font pairing. The font pack that we got selected already is slide into my DM sans. I wanna change that. So I'll select change font pack and then choose the I'ma need some hyperspace option. I'll preview these changes and look at that. Our new hero section, different feel from our first but still with an emphasis on the people in our church in that big full width background photo, still easy to navigate, still simple and familiar web design structure. So we're hitting all of our marks. Let's build another hero section. And by the way, I know we're making these in Nucleus. I want this to be valuable for you, irrespective of the website builder that you're using. So I created another guide to help with this for these hero sections. Again, it's linked in the description. We've got every layout that we're building here and each of its distinctives with examples and diagrams. So whatever builder that you're using, you can use these blueprints as examples. And I know we're spending a lot of time on this hero section, but again, this is where that first impression is made. This is the part of your site 
that will be seen by more people than any other. We have to get it right. And as you can see, we're building our hero sections around the photos because the photos are the emphasis and different photos are gonna work with different layouts. And for example, one problem I commonly run into with church photos is the text overlapping with people's faces. So you know, take a look at hero section one. The text and eyes of our people are all separate. There's no overlap, at least on desktop. And that's the thing. You likely won't be able to avoid this completely on every single device size, if you do want to preview your site on different device sizes, I use Chrome for this. If you just navigate to View and then Developer, click on Developer Tools, and now you can preview your site in different device sizes. So in terms of overlap with eye lines, on desktop, we know we're good. On tablet, looks like we're good in this orientation. I'll check the other, good. And then on mobile, as expected, with the amount of text in our hero section, it is overlapping. For me, that's perfectly fine with how this looks on mobile. If you hate that, You'll want to try a different hero configuration, so let's build another. I'm going to click Change Layout again, and all I'm going to do this time is move my text anchoring to bottom left. And then similarly, in my Text and Buttons tab, move all the text alignment options from the center to the left. The photo I have in mind, I'll upload, and you can see with this photo, there's just a lot of people and faces, and so keeping my text aligned bottom left will prioritize those faces and avoid the text overlapping with any of them. I'll bring that media opacity back down to 80, fade back up to 40 because the image brightness has increased again. I'll change the headline to reaching out to bring people home. I'm also going to revert back to our previous sans serif font pack. So design, fonts, change font pack, slide into my DMs sans, confirm, and preview. And yeah, this is gorgeous. So that's three different hero options. Let's do one last one because you might be looking at these photos and thinking, listen, these photos are stunning. My church does not have anything like that. What are we supposed to do? Don't worry, got you covered. If you don't have any of these big, beautiful photos, there's a simple and straightforward solution, a photo collage, where you combine a number of images together. Maybe none of those images on their own is a stunner, but together, even if they're shot on a phone, they still remain faithful to our objective capturing the organic nature of church life with an emphasis on the people. And I've even got a done for you Canva template for this to make it as easy as possible, linked in the description. Here's that template right here. First thing that you wanna do is go to uploads and then upload the images you want to use. For this template, you're gonna need five. And ideally, it's a mix here of different people in your church, different spots, inside, outside, variety is what you want. Then drag each photo into the container that you want it to go reframe and adjust as needed, then click on share and download your new image. And now let's build this new hero section. We'll click change layout. And this time we're gonna go with layout one, preferred section height, medium, preferred text width, medium, text anchoring, center, center, section inset, full width, desktop image placement, right, mobile image placement, bottom. Now to text and buttons, all alignment options to the left, buttons stacked, preferred button size larger, and we'll Turn back on some more text options. So we'll bring back overline and body. And now let's go to the colors tab for the first time. So far, our images have been the full background of our hero sections. We're gonna move away from that with this hero section and I want the background to be nice and bright. So I'm gonna choose the white color palette. In background, I'm gonna remove our previous photo by just clicking on none. And now I'll close out this window, scroll down to media and upload our image. And here's what our final hero section looks like. I've reverted back to the mobile style menu because that fits better here. And feel free to experiment with different color options and fonts again. With this church that you're seeing, we use the font pack from your desk to the press. And instead of black and white on the buttons, we used their blue brand color. Remember, we've got each of these hero sections with accompanying diagrams linked in a guide in the description below. So make sure to take advantage of that. Now, lastly, let's finish up the rest of our homepage. You know, it's, it's your call, which the four hero sections at the top that you use from there, there's a formula I like for the remainder of the homepage that we've already got set up for you. And it's broken up into sections. Hero section is at the top, then an about us section, then a plan a visit section, then a dual section dedicated to staff and calendar, then a final section dedicated to next steps. So you can see on the front end, each of the five sections on your homepage. And then in the Nucleus admin area, you'll see those same five sections. And that's because Nucleus is a section-based web builder. So to make changes to each of these sections, we'd simply navigate to the page in question, then click on the section we wanna edit, 
So let's do that. First, for the About Us section, there's a paragraph about the church with a call to action button linked to the About Us page. Here, you can swap out copy for your own church as needed. I'll click back to all to return to the sections at a glance and now navigate to the plan your visit section. You'll wanna change your service times at the top to match your church, swap out the photo and adjust any other copy that you want. And rest assured, we're gonna to get to the plan your visit sequence a bit later and what that button links to. But for now, we're gonna to go to the staff and calendar section. Again, swap in photos as needed. And then finally, our next step section where another photo gets swapped. And then we're just gonna make sure that our footer is all set in the Nucleus admin area. I'll navigate to design and footer. I'll set my logos here, just as I did earlier for my header. In the body paragraph, make sure your service times are accurate. And then under contact info, make sure that we get your church's email phone number and address updated. This will ensure that your church address is on every single page of your website, which is very, very important. One final tweak in this section. I'm gonna jump into the header tab and scroll to the bottom. If you're using the mobile style menu design on your Nucleus, that's gonna come with an accompanying photo on desktop. So here, you'll wanna change that, swap with your church's photo, and then in navigation, I'm gonna click on footer navigation at the bottom. Here we've got placeholder links for each of your social profiles. Just click into those and replace the links with your actual profile links. And ta-da, our entire homepage is done. Just like that, plus the header, navigation, and footer. This also wraps up the first I, inspiration, in the three I's of our church website policy. We've still got information and invitation left. So let's move next to information. All right, to recap, in the previous section, inspiration, the phrase that we committed to memory was show, don't tell. In this section, information, the phrase to memorize is not everything needs a page. Okay, not everything needs a page. In fact, the website that we've set up for you only has five pages. The home page, which we've already completed, the about us page, calendar, staff and leaders, and next steps. And as you're about to see, most church websites can fit within these five pages. Might you need to add an extra page here or there? Sure, but just don't rush to that. And for a website to be easy to navigate, plus easy to maintain and organize, meaning best for both your website visitors and your website admins, you wanna keep it as lean as possible. Now, you might hear that and go, you know, Brady, that's just not realistic. If we're not giving each thing that needs it a page, are we just eliminating that stuff from our site altogether? No, not at all. Remember, not everything needs a page. There are other options, and I call this the kitchen principle. I want you to think about a tidy kitchen. The food is in the pantry, utensils are in drawers, pots and pans are in cupboards. Basically, everything has its place. You know, I've never stumbled upon a tidy kitchen that stores its spatulas on the countertop. Why is that? Well, because it would be maniacal to keep every utensil, appliance, cutting board, pot, pan, and dry food item on the countertop. Sure, it would make everything visible, but it would be a mess. And yet, this is the chaotic state that most of our church websites live in right now. So let's take the kitchen principle and apply it to your church website. We want to eliminate clutter and remove unnecessary pages. The good news is we've already set it all up for you. So let's just take a look. We're gonna go to our About Us page first. We can navigate there by clicking the button in our About Us section or by opening up the navigation menu and clicking About Us. On this page, you'll find three sections. First, hero section at the top of the page with a big photo container. You know how much I love those. It's paired with an intro paragraph. Scroll down and you'll find our church values housed in these cards. These cards scroll horizontally so you can add as many as you want to make sure that each of your church's values are fully represented without it taking up additional real estate on the page itself. And this is a recurring theme that you'll encounter as we move forward. Finally, on the last section of this page, you'll find a section dedicated to church beliefs. Here, each belief exists within a collapsible dropdown. You know, sometimes in web design, we call this type of design an accordion section. So click on a belief that you want to read more about and it expands like an accordion. Now, similar to values, beliefs are crucial for a church website. But if all we do is slap that text on a page fully visible, It'd be like storing every spatula, whisk, and pair of tongs directly on the kitchen countertop instead of neatly in a drawer where they belong. So to make changes to this page, we're gonna to go to pages in the Nucleus admin area, then click on About Us. I mentioned the About Us page has three sections here. You can see each of those three sections, hero, values, and beliefs. In the hero section, I'll want to change out the photo and adjust the text as needed. In the values section, if I scroll down, I'll land on the cards area. And here we have editable cards for each that you saw on the actual page. 
If I click into the love card, for example, I can change the text. Importantly, we wrote these values to be very broad and applicable to most churches. So feel free to take any of the copy here that you like and use it for yourself. If you want to remove a card, click on the downward arrow and click delete. If you wanna add a new one, simply click on add another. You could also click that same drop-down area for delete and then duplicate a card, which would give you a new card to edit that already shares the styles of the others. Finally, to our beliefs section. And again, the copy in these beliefs drop-downs, you're more than welcome to use it for yourself. Similar to the cards, these will be found in the list tab. Click to open and change the text, drop down to delete, add another to expand the list. And that will close out our About Us page. Remember to preview any changes you've made. Just click the preview button if you wanna save, but not publish, click on exit and then save and close to publish changes live to your site. Click publish. To our calendar page next. You can find this page by clicking on the Our Calendar button on the homepage or by clicking Calendar in the navigation menu. To edit the calendar page in the Nucleus Admin area, we'll go to Pages, then click on Calendar. And the only edit you'll need to make to this page is to replace our calendar link with yours. You see, Nucleus comes with integrations to both Apple Calendar and Google Calendar. So all you need to do is paste in your iCal link and Nucleus will automatically format and present it based on the layout and display that you've chosen. You can see how this works on the front end here. Our calendar section is automatically pulling from our Google Calendar and formatting it to perfectly match our website design so it seamlessly fits in. I can expand an event to see more details. I can scroll through to see future weeks. I can change the date range and even subscribe to the calendar so I can add the church calendar to my own. Uh, formatting your Apple or Google or Planning Center calendar into an ICS public link that you can insert into Nucleus is not complex. And I've linked the guide on how to do it in the description below this video. You can also go directly to nucleus.church slash help to find all of our documentation. Just click on Help Center, then I'll type in Calendar, click on the Calendar section, and here you'll find a full walkthrough with a video tutorial on how to configure this section. Okay, three pages down, only two to go. Next, we'll head to Staff and Leaders. Now, before we go to the Staff page in the Nucleus Admin area, we're actually gonna navigate to a different section first, and that is Church settings. You can find that by clicking the Nucleus logo in the top left corner of your admin area and then church settings. Here under church info, I'm going to click on staff and leaders. And as you'll see here, we've got placeholders already set up for you, your staff and leaders in your church. Instead of keeping these records in your staff and leaders page, we keep it in your church's Nucleus account overall. That way we can use these records across your Nucleus and not just in one page. So to edit these records, click to open a leader, and here you can change their info as needed, name and role. You can upload a number of different photos, make sure you've got at least one, bio, contact info, and then you can even organize your staff and leaders into different lists. So you could have one for elders, one for pastors, one for the youth department. You know, depending on how deep you wanna get here, that's totally your call and dependent on the context of your church. And here's what a finished staff and leaders section looks like. Click into a leader and you'll see the summary tab, about and contact. You can scroll through to the next leader, same info, close out, and you're back to the staff and leaders page. This page is already set up for you. If you do want to experiment with how the info gets displayed, you can navigate to web, then staff and leaders page. And in the staff and leaders section, you can click on customize display, and mess around with different configurations to see additional options. In my experience, churches tend to breeze through this section of their website and not do a thorough job of filling in the info. Same goes actually for the beliefs and values sections on the About Us page. I just wanna stress the importance of these two pages. In our research and data, by far, these are two of the most popular and frequently visited pages across all church websites. People that are checking out your church, they wanna know what you believe and they wanna know who's in leadership. So don't skip over these sections. Finally, let's explore our next steps page. Like every page we've discussed so far, it's linked on our homepage and in the nav menu, big photo container at the top for section one. Section two is a full width section with three photos for promoting an event or ministry. The placeholder copy has it for a food bank fundraiser right now. Section three features two promotional windows for events or ministries. Here I've got them set up for an all church dinner and a couple's date night. Section four is for getting involved at the church with some of the core actions that we want people to take. It's the connect card, prayer, contact us, and give. And then section five is for all of the ongoing ministries at the church. I've got four set up here, kids, youth, small groups, and preschool. Importantly, the structure of this page 
is intentional. Ministries go at the bottom, core next steps go above that, and the two sections above that are for rotating seasonal events. That's why it's the all church dinner, couples date night, and food bank fundraiser featured here as placeholders. The idea is that the bottom two sections, they never really change after you've built this page, but the two above them provide your church with three spots for rotating seasonal events with these big photo containers to visually show what these events are all about. So let's make some edits to this page and explore a few more critical features of Nucleus that we've yet to talk about. The first few edits that we wanna make will be familiar to you at this point. In the hero section, we'll change the image. In the featured card, you'll find three photo placeholders for the event that you want to highlight. You can replace those and change the text to the relevant event at your church. Christmas is great for this. Easter, VBS, fall festival, trunk or treat, anything in your church that's a big deal, but is seasonal. Next, to the emphasized events section, same changes. Copy gets swapped out, images get swapped out. But let's talk here about the call to action buttons that we have set up for these two events. On the page itself, if I click on RSVP here, a full page form opens up. This form is powered by Nucleus, and in Nucleus, we call forms Flows. Flows is included in your web plan, so it's not an extra cost or anything like that. And this is one of the other ways that we embody the kitchen principle. On Nucleus, we do not embed forms into pages. Why? Well, because they take up a ton of space and they're not optimized for mobile as best they can be in that configuration. It's the same approach we took with our beliefs in the accordion sections on the About Us page. Every belief is there for someone to click on and read about in its fullness, but they're not expanded fully by default because then the page is just full of these big chunks of text that make considerably less friendly and aggravating to navigate. So back to our next steps page. If I click the X, I can exit out of this flow and I'm back on the page. And now if I click the register now button for the couple's date night, again, I'm presented with a full page flow. This one begins by telling me about some details of this event. I'll click continue and now begin filling out the flow to provide my information. Now just imagine if we had a page where both of those forms were fully embedded. That page would be too long. So what would we do? we'd make two pages. And now we're back to a new page for every single event, ministry, and happening at the church. The website soon has dozens of pages. Surely some of these pages are out of date because the event has passed. We've forgotten about them. Now our entire website has become challenging to manage and frustrating to navigate, making it less likely to get used. Our church doesn't like going there. This is why the kitchen principle is so critical. Not everything needs a page. Now, to edit this signup flow, here's what you need to do. Click on the Nucleus logo to navigate to flows and click on RSVP for all church dinner. And you'll find a very simple flow. We ask for contact info in the first step and who's coming in the second step. When someone fills out this flow, it gets stored in the submissions area of flows in your Nucleus. And we can even set up follow-up emails and notifications for staff. We'll get to that later. If I wanted to ask for additional info in this flow, I just click on add new and to help with building flows from scratch, if I go to all flows and click create flow, I can start from scratch, but I can also start from a template. Click there and you can see all the flows that we've built for you, ready to customize as needed or just use as is. And then back on our next steps page in the column actions is where I can connect my button to the action I want people to take. So it's connected to a flow right now. I can change that to a different flow or I can just connect it to a link. So if you're using a third party signup tool, you can connect to it that way. I will also say, if you are a Planning Center user, Nucleus has a Planning Center integration built in. So you can use flows and send all of that info to your Planning Center account once the flow has been completed automatically. Documentation to that integration is linked in the description below. Okay, I've shown you accordion sections and flows. Let me show you another piece of this puzzle to our next section on the next steps page. We have four cards. If I click the button on the give card, a giving flow opens up. This is powered by Nucleus Giving, or as I just showed you, you can connect this button to any giving form or giving portal hosted on another platform. On the contact us card, this opens up a contact flow that we've already built for you. When someone submits the flow, the submission ends up in your submissions area. And if you wanted to get a notification email for each time this contact us flow got submitted or send a notification email to another person on staff. Go to the flow in question, click on notifications, and then add the email you want to be notified. If you click on the button on the prayer card, Nucleus Prayer will open up. And this is also included with Nucleus Web, no extra charge. And it's another feature of Nucleus that is native to churches. You won't find a feature like this in the vast majority of website builders. Why? Because most website platforms have no interest in prioritizing churches and 
our needs, which is why I'm also proud to say that even if you don't have a paid plan to Nucleus, Nucleus Prayer is free for every church. And we have an entire video dedicated to Nucleus Prayer. It's linked on the screen and in the description. The reason we made prayer and other parts of Nucleus free is for folks that are watching this video and thinking, well, I like this idea of the kitchen principle and not everything needs a page, but I can't switch my website right now. So I guess this video isn't relevant to me. Incorrect, because we've created an entire plugin within Nucleus that works on any church website. It's 100% free and it exists to allow any church website to make these changes and abide by the kitchen principle to make their site more usable and effective. Appropriately, this brings us to the only card left in this section on our Next Steps page, the Connect card. It's the perfect intro to all of the free features of Nucleus that work on any church website. So join me in our final section, Invitation, as I break it all down for you. Well, welcome to our final section as we build an entire church website from scratch. This is Invitation, because the core issue with many church websites today, it's simple. They are dedicated to presentation, not invitation. Now, does this mean that your church website should not have information about service times, your beliefs, your pastor, etc.? Of course not. Those are crucial elements to any site, and that's why we've covered it already in the information section. But here's the bottom line. The end goal of your church's website needs to be people taking a next step. Otherwise, we're missing the mark. Now, granted, that's a bit philosophical. So what does it look like practically? Well, say hello to the launcher by Nucleus. Perhaps you've noticed it already. It's this next step circular button in the bottom right corner of every page of your site, or you've seen it in the Nucleus admin area, Launcher. The Launcher exists to instantly transform your church's website from a presentation platform to an invitation platform. And like Nucleus Prayer, it is 100% free for every church, and it can be installed on any website platform. Your site does not need to be hosted on Nucleus to use the Launcher. We have installation guides linked in the description below for a myriad of different web platforms. If you wanna get these free tools, just go to nucleus.church slash free, and you can create your free account there. Again, this is our gift to churches around the world, no strings attached. If you've been following along and you've already created your account, you've got these free tools already. Now, what does the launcher do? Well, you've already seen it in action. Remember those full page flows for the all church dinner and couples date night? Those were hosted in the launcher. All flows in Nucleus live inside the launcher. Same goes for the giving flow. Nucleus giving lives in the launcher. The contact us flow from the next steps page that we briefly touched on, that lives in the launcher. The launcher is the home for your church's most important next steps. It is the secret weapon that we use to achieve our objective of invitation on a church website. The best part? The launcher lives on every single page of your church's website. No matter where you go, that next steps button is accessible. And when I click it, the launcher opens. And now with just one click, every important next step in your church can be accessed instantly. Sure, I can access the contact us flow on the next steps page, but I can also find it here in the launcher as one of the primary actions. In the Nucleus admin area, let's navigate now to launcher. And here you can see the five actions that I have set up. If you wanna add more, just click add new. If I want to highlight an action, I can set it up as a featured action, giving it more of an emphasis than others. In the design tab, I can upload my logos for the launcher. I can change its color to match my church's branding and I can change the icon. Right now it's set up as next steps. I can change that to another preset that we have. You can also upload your own custom icon if you prefer. Now, let's get back to our next steps page because there was one more card that we needed to talk about and that was our connect card right here. If I click the fill out button on our connect card, here's what you'll find. It's almost like a, a mini page. There's a featured image at the top, a single column of copy with a call to action at the bottom. No navigation menu, no distractions. This is another powerful feature that the launcher enables and it's called info cards. Info cards play a critical role in us accomplishing the kitchen principle because they're another tool for us as we aspire to fulfill that objective that not everything needs a page. And for this individual info card, it's the first step in what we call the ultimate church guest follow-up system that we've already built inside your brand new Nucleus. A visitor can access this by clicking on the connect card button from your next steps page, but we've also created custom print ready connect cards for this as well. They are linked in the description below, free downloads with a video tutorial on how to customize them. And there are two cards here for you. One is for your congregation that regularly attends and one 
is for folks that are new. The one that says next steps is for regular attenders at your church. And here, here's how it's meant to function. You make an announcement from stage in service, inviting people to register for the upcoming couple's date night. You invite them to scan the QR code on the back of the next steps card in the seat back in front of them. They land on your next steps page. They click the button to register for date night. They fill out the flow. The submission gets stored in your nucleus. Perhaps you've integrated with your planning center account. So it also goes there. And the notification that you set up in your nucleus flow gets sent to the ministry leader that needs to know how many people are registered for the upcoming couple's date night. That is the whole system now working together seamlessly. For the other card, the one that says connect card on the front, this is for your guests. And this QR code is meant to link directly to the info card that we were just looking at. Remember, info cards are powered by the launcher. So to find this link, you can navigate to launcher in the Nucleus admin area, then info cards, and then click the drop down arrow on the connect card info card and select copy sharing link. That's the link that you'll want. Now, when folks scan the QR code on that print ready connect card that we've provided for you, you've already customized. They'll be taken directly to this info card and the beginning of the guest follow-up sequence. And I've actually written an announcement script that you can use for this in person as well. You'll find it on the screen right now. It reads like this, quote, if you're new with us at church today, I especially want to welcome you to Life Abundant. We're so glad that you're here to celebrate. We would love to pledge a $5 donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. Supporting other charities is something that we do every week and we'd love to include you in that process. Simply locate the blue card and scan the QR code on the back. Follow the prompts and we'll send you an email asking which charity that you want us to donate to. And that's it. Again, you can do this right now. Just scan the QR code on the back of the blue card. Now, I bet you're wondering why this $5 charity donation? Here's the thing. I am not a huge fan of giving visitors to church stuff like mugs with the church's logo. Instead, I prefer pledging $5 to a charity they choose. A few reasons for this. First, it demonstrates that you are a generous church that is outwardly focused on the world and community, not just inwardly on your church's self-interests. My belief is that what you decide to do in this first interaction with a guest will demonstrate to them what your church really values. And choosing to make this first interaction about giving to others and not a promotion for yourself, I think that makes a lasting impression, but it also establishes your church's brand, a brand of generosity and care. You know, because branding is not your logo on a mug. It's what others think and say about your church. It gets better though. Another reason I love the $5 donation is that it invites guests into the act of giving and allows them to choose which charity they want to support. And this is key. Don't pre-select a charity ahead of time. Instead, choose several registered charities that your church proudly supports and then allow your guest to select from that list. This ensures that a guest does not select a charity that does not align with your church's values, but it also sets a precedent with your new visitor that you are partners from day one. You invite your guests into the act of giving to be a participant. And this is what we want in our churches, right? Active participants, not passive spectators who just sit in pews. Now, there is one crucial disclaimer I will make about donating $5 on behalf of a new visitor. If you do this carelessly, it can sometimes appear like you are almost withholding donations to worthwhile causes unless someone gives you their contact info. We don't want that. And this is why in the announcement script, I purposely say supporting other charities is something we do every week and we'd love to include you in that process. I then reiterate that exact sentiment in the info card. So it's there a second time. The implication here is clear. This money is gonna get donated irrespective of your visit to our church. We just wanna invite you into the process of directing where some of it goes. And this is actually important for another reason that churches very often overlook because while we want to connect with guests on their first visit to our church, a lot of the times guests just aren't ready yet. We can do everything in our power as a church to make connection easy, but maybe someone had a bad church experience in their past, or perhaps they're just not ready to give out their contact info on a first visit. That's the case for most people actually. And in that case, we still want to leave a good lasting impression. Too often our guest follow-up sequences, we only think about the people who do give us their contact info. What about those that don't? Even though they did not connect on the first visit, they will still be able to connect in the future. And so we need to consider those people as well. Very rarely are relationships linear. And a simple line that emphasizes, yes, we do support other charities every week in our church. If you want to be a part of that, great. If not, that's cool too. Well, that really can go a long way. It's totally your call. 
if you want to use this guest follow-up sequence as is or not. You can change it to offer a mug if you prefer, but it's already built for you inside Nucleus, and either way, we're going to need to make some customizations to it. So back to our info card. I'm going to change the photo, and if you want to change the copy, otherwise, you can keep it as is. Now, where does someone go after the info card? Well, if they click the button at the bottom of the info card, they get taken to our connect card flow. And now you can start to see how all the pieces are working together. Your next steps page has a button. That button opens up an info card. That info card connects to a flow. It's all happening inside the launcher. Here's what the connect card flow looks like. We ask for the guest's name, then their email, then their phone number, which is optional. Then just a brief blurb for them to tell us about themselves. And then we reiterate that we have a gift for them. Quote, after you submit your information below, watch for an email hitting your inbox in the next couple of minutes. In that email, we'll be asking you which charity you'd like us to donate $5 to on your behalf. So make sure to reply to that message. To customize this flow, just navigate to the flows area in your nucleus, then connect card back to the flow. Once I hit continue and then submit, I land on the thank you page area that reads, Thanks for sharing some of your information with us. It's great to connect with you. Watch your inbox for a special email from us any moment. Back in flows in the Nucleus admin area. If I click on the messages tab, you'll see the follow-up email that I've pre-written for you. You're gonna wanna change the name away from Brady at Life Abundant Church, of course, to a real leader or pastor at your church. The email subject here is reply needed. And the email reads like this, quote, this is Brady from Life Abundant. Thanks for filling out our Connect card. Here's what you need to know about Life Abundant. We love generosity. And we think one of the best ways to live like Jesus is to give. Knowing this, we'd love to make a $5 donation on your behalf to a charity of your choice. Simply reply to this email with your choice from the list of registered charities below, and we'll make a donation on your behalf. As you can see, I then have a list of registered charities as an example here. You'll want to put in charities that align with your church's mission and vision. Perhaps they're regional, they're special for you. The email finishes, talk soon, Brady, Life Abundant Church. P.S. If you have any questions at all for me, don't hesitate to ask. When you reply to this email, it'll be sent directly to me and I'll make sure to respond as soon as I can. Then an action button to reply that says reply with choice. You're going to want to customize the body of the email and the reply email as well. Three things to note. Again, we emphasize that the donation will be made either way and that we simply want to invite the guest into the process of helping direct where it will go. Second, when the guest replies, they're getting connected directly to a pastor or a real person on staff at your church, which is the whole point of all of this invitation and next steps and real human connection. And then finally, by having your guest reply to the email, your church's sending address will be automatically marked as a safe sender in their inbox going forward. So now the next time you send this guest an email, because they responded to the first one, your future emails won't land in their spam folder. So this ultimate guest sequence, it's pre-built into your nucleus. Why? Because we care immensely about invitation and next steps. That's the objective of a church website. At least it should be. The connect cards, the announcement script, the pre-written email copy, they're all included in your church website super guide, also linked below, is a recap of this entire sequence in written form for you to revisit as needed. Let's put a bow on the final section of our next steps page now. This is the section dedicated to all the ministries in your church. So if you have a men's uh, ministry, if you have a women's ministry, missions, young adults, etc., I'd create cards that go here for that. And my recommendation to you is to link info cards to each of these ministries. Unless the ministry is a behemoth, it does not need a page. So for example, you know, uh, might your kid's ministry require a dedicated page? Perhaps when you create new pages in Nucleus, just so you know, we have templates for that to make the process quick and painless. But for, you know, those other smaller ministries, don't jump to creating pages for them just because your biggest ministries have pages. Rely on info cards instead. Now, to this point, I haven't mentioned as you may have noticed, anything about online church or live streaming. You may have also noticed that any mention of that is completely absent from our site. Well, what gives? Here's the thing. Online church is a bit unique. It is an incredibly important next step, but it's only relevant at certain times each week. So I want to make the invitation for that prominent, but only at the right times, making it the perfect candidate for banners. And I've got one pre-made for you already in the Nucleus admin area. You'll find banners in the launcher. Meaning, just like info cards, just like the launcher widget itself, banners are free for every church and will work on any church website once the launcher is installed. If I click on the Join Us Online banner, 
This is what I've prepared for online church, a banner with a call to action to watch the online service. For the schedule though, you'll want to activate the show weekly recurring option and then set this banner to be visible for I'd recommend roughly an hour before service and then disappear once service has concluded. Then I'll click save. And here's what you'll see now at the times that you've set the banner at the top of the page. So we're using the most prominent real estate that we have on our sites to invite people to take the most important next step at that time. But then once that time has passed, the banner no longer shows, meaning we're not promoting something and distracting people with a next step that is no longer timely. And this is what banners are best for. Another example for this and a template that you'll find we've already made for you is for inclement weather. If service is being threatened, use this banner to confirm, yes, church is still happening or no, stay home. You can customize the colors of banners. You can link to a flow. So you could use a banner for registration for a timely event. You can also have multiple banners live at once if absolutely needed. And we've designed them to neatly stack so they're always nicely organized and as much as possible pleasing to look at. All right, we are approaching the final stages of this masterclass, but one glaring item has gone untouched to this point, and that is the most prominent call to action across our entire site. You'll see it as one of the primary buttons at the top of the homepage. It's got its own section on the homepage if you scroll down a touch. It is in the footer. It is at the very top of our navigation menu. It is our plan of visit sequence. The great news, I have already built it all for you. So let's dive in. If I click the plan of visit button from any of the spots on the site that I just mentioned, I'll land on an info card. You will of course want to change this photo along with the address and service times and church name in the body copy. This info card is connected to a plan of visit flow. The beginning of this flow reads, we're so happy that you'll be joining us in person. We're excited to host you. Simply share a little bit about yourself and your family, if applicable, to help prepare for your visit. We then ask for name, email, phone number, which is optional. We ask if any other adults will be joining this person like a spouse. And if so, we add them and their info to the flow submission. Then we ask about kids, their names and birth dates and gender. We ask about what car they're driving so we can identify them when they arrive and give them a warm greeting and assist with things like kids check-in, which can sometimes be a bit confusing when you're doing it for the first time. This step though is also optional. So people can skip it if you know they're not really into that kind of thing. Finally, we ask, if they would like a church leader to get in touch before their first visit with a spot for final notes and questions before they submit the flow. Upon submission, they'll see a note that reads, quote, thanks for sharing some of your information with us. It's great to get connected and we're excited to meet you in person soon. I'm followed by an email in their inbox that says, thanks for planning your visit to Life Abundant. If you requested contact from our church or had questions prior to your visit, Expect to hear from us shortly. In the meantime, below you'll find all the important details that you need to prepare for your visit, including service times and directions for where we meet for church. Looking forward to seeing you soon. This email has service times and address in it, along with a link directly to your church's maps listing in Google. That way, when it's Sunday morning and that family's trying to get out the door and they ask themselves, oh, what time is church? Where's that church again? They can just pull up that email and start navigation directly from that button. So in flows, you'll want to make sure you go into the plan of visit flow, make any changes that you'd like to see. And of course, customize the copy in that follow-up email and change that Google Maps listing to yours. The only other part of your website built that's worth highlighting is sermons. Your Nucleus website comes with a full sermon hub included in the web plan, no extra cost. Here's what a complete sermon hub looks like right now. The featured message is at the top. Below that, you can organize sermons into playlists. So a playlist could be a series or a book of the Bible or a speaker or any way that you want to group messages together. When I click into an individual sermon, you'll see the embed at the top of the page. I can switch back and forth between audio and video. So if your church doesn't have video recordings, no sweat, the sermon hub is still a great fit for you. You can see the message has info, scripture, speaker, and topic all configured. There are call to action buttons to Nucleus Prayer, to give or to go back to all sermons or the site's main homepage. At the bottom, we've got other messages in this playlist and maybe the coolest part, a message notes tab where people can take their own notes, they can fill in the blanks for notes that you've prepared for the sermon, and then they can save those notes by either downloading them or having them emailed to themselves or others. To access sermons in the Nucleus admin area, just click the Nucleus logo and then sermons to begin setting that up. I should also mention that you can create, host, and publish podcasts directly from sermons within Nucleus. Again, no extra cost. 
Now, you've likely noticed this, but throughout our website build, there has been a banner in the center top of the screen that reads, apply for a makeover or upgrade now. For those that have been following along with this build, you'll have seen the same banner. If you click upgrade now, you can create an active subscription. And when you're ready to get your site live, all you'll need to do is point your domain at the Nucleus servers. We have guides for setting this up for a variety of different domain registrars. They are all linked in the description, accessible through the Nucleus Help Center as well. But what is this apply for a makeover option? Well, earlier this year, we made the announcement that by the end of 2025, we'd be giving 1,000 church websites free makeovers. I mentioned this at the beginning of the masterclass. If you click the free makeovers button at the top of the Nucleus homepage, you can learn more about this, but here's how it works. It begins by us sending a professional photographer to your church in person to capture photos of a weekend service. So if you've been following with this masterclass and thought to yourself, yeah, we don't have photos that look anything like that. I get it. And that's why we launched makeovers. This photographer is completely free, no travel cost, no cost whatsoever. It's all covered by us. Then we build out your entire site again for free. And we actually follow the steps outlined in this apprenticeship that you and I have just completed together. We just happen to do it all for you. We then jump on a call with you one-on-one -on -one to deliver your makeover and your brand new church website. It is all free. There is no catch. And you can see completed makeovers as examples at nucleus.church slash makeovers. Makeovers typically take about a month to complete once we've received the edited photographs back from the photographer. You get to keep all those photographs, by the way, as well. Use them in any other project that you may want to. We're committed to completing a makeover for any church that wants it, but there is a waiting list. You can join the waiting list at that same link, nucleus.church slash makeovers. Right now, we're emailing roughly 50 new churches every week to invite them to fill out their makeover application when their time on the waiting list comes up. To expedite things, make sure you've got hello at nucleus.church in your safe senders list and respond ASAP to that email that we send when it's your turn just to minimize any delays. Now, I do wanna emphasize that any website has two costs. There's building the website and there's hosting the website. And this is true across any website platform. The best way to think of it is like the vehicle you drive. There's the cost to buy the vehicle and then there's the cost for the gas to make it go. The cost to buy the vehicle or the cost to build the website is always the bigger cost. And that's the cost that we're covering completely with makeovers. We build the site, we pay for the photo shoot, we customize your connect cards, we do it all. What we don't pay for once the site is done is the gas to keep it going. And that is the monthly hosting cost. You can see that cost at nucleus.church slash pricing. For those that are going to build their Nucleus themselves, now that they have graduated from this apprenticeship, congrats, by the way, I wanna highlight additional support resources we have. We have weekly live classes. These have an educational component plus live Q&A hosted by Alex Mills. You may recognize Alex from the Pro Church Tool Show. He is my co-host. He's also a bivocational pastor himself and his church's website is hosted on Nucleus. Our support team is also only an email away. The average response time for the last 50,000 plus emails that we've received is under three hours. There's no AI, there's no robots to talk to first, always just real people that love helping churches. And look, if you made it to the end of this masterclass, truly kudos to you. You are one of the very few, so you should be proud. Make sure to download the church website super guide with all of the resources that I mentioned all throughout this masterclass linked below if you haven't already for whatever reason. And thanks as always for your time, attention, and trust.